I'm Jason with Born Handy, and today I'm going to take you through the series of steps that we use to build the chairs that you see behind me. These chairs are one-offs that were made specifically for this store to solve a handful of problems. The number one problem being the wall behind us was not capable of supporting a mechanism like this. And so we made a chair with a back high enough and sturdy enough that we could connect this directly to the chair irrespective of what's behind the wall. In terms of my portion of the build, literally all I provided was the framework for the chair itself. Tamika with the hair diagram provided the rest. She was also the mind behind the design of these chairs. We sat down together after we discovered there wasn't going to be an easy way to connect these radial, what do we call these things? Dryers? Yes, dryers. Okay. A dryer, a processor, and a steamer. Equipment. <laughs> We sat down and designed these chairs after it was discovered that we were going to have a hard time connecting this equipment to the wall without the fear of it falling over one day. And so the chair idea was born. After I delivered the rough structure of the chair, Tamika took over and she has added the seat backs, the cushions, as well as the wood accent that you see around the chair. In addition, she had her own people attach this equipment to the chair itself. And so we ended up in a situation where we didn't have to worry about the wall. We ended up with some chairs that matched the rest of the decoration within the salon as well as scratching the do-it-yourself itch that exists in most people who own their own business. So if you like these chairs and want to build some of your own, I'm going to show you how I built these in part one of this video, and then we're going to hand it over to the hair diagram, and she's going to show you how they were completed in part two. Okay, so we got all of our pieces cut out. These are the two sides that we're looking at and they are 17 and a half inches wide by 15 and a quarter inches high. We've also gone ahead and drilled these for pocket holes. Uh, these are going to be attached to the front and to the seat using pocket screws. So I did go ahead and pre-drill those. You'll notice they are basically a mirror copy of one another. There's no rhyme or reason. I just kind of put them where I thought they ought to be with the exception of the pocket screw that's toward the back. There is going to be a two by four that runs through here. And so we've moved the pocket hole forward far enough to clear that three and a half inch wide two by four. With the two sides out of the way, we'll move up here and we'll look at the top. This is the seat part and the seat is 42 inches wide by 16 and three quarter inches from front to back. And this right here is the front. Now you'll notice the front has a radius here. This radius is completely optional, but if you wanted to add this radius, you would start at four inches and measure in from either side. And as the radius starts at that corner, it raises up three inches. And you can do that yourself with something like a bow jig or a pattern template, or even just roughing it with a jigsaw. And you'll notice we've also included pocket holes along the top of the front piece to help and secure the seat down to the top of the chair. The seat back is 42 inches wide and 74 inches high. And the side pieces that are going to go on either side of the seat back, they are three and a half inches wide to cover the two by four. And their length is also 74 inches, but we'll cut those to length a little bit later on in the project. So before I screw the side to the front, I'm going to apply a thin bead of glue. This will help make this piece more secure in the event that a screw should fail for some reason. And I'll take the piece and set it up on top doing my best to line it up so that the top of both pieces are aligned perfectly and put a few screws in. I'm going to apply a little bit of downward pressure because pocket screws can sometimes cause the piece that you're working with to move a little just as the screw passes through. Now I'll do the same thing on the other side. And here laying uh, upside down on the floor, I have what's going to be the seat. And over here I have the uh, actual chair frame section itself. And I'm going to go ahead and apply a bead of glue all the way along the upper edge. And I'm going to flip it upside down and place it onto the chair. And then I'll use a combination square to, to space the seat out exactly as it should be. So what I'm looking for is for my seat to sit actually three and a half inches beyond the frame of the seat. And that wraps up that portion right there. And with the chair assembly together, now we're going to go ahead and, and temporarily attach the risers that are going to support the back structure. And that'll give us somewhere to work when we actually attach the back structure to the riser itself. I'm ready to attach the back structure and I want to be sure and properly space the 2x4. So I've cut a piece of scrap plywood 
and I'll place it on, run a screw, and then I can pull the 2x4 out there as I run these screws in and make sure the spacing is consistent throughout. And what you can't see on camera is that that scrap piece of plywood is being used to space the 2x4 just far enough away from the edge that when I screw it down, it'll leave just enough space so when the side piece goes on, it'll sit flush with the outside edge of the back of the seat. So now I've got the back on and in place and I want to go ahead and uh, put some pocket screws to attach the back panel to the seat panel uh, before we put the 2x4s on here for additional reinforcement. These are probably not necessary, but as far as I'm concerned, I have a bucket of screws. There's just no reason not to put them. Um, the only thing that it'll create is an extra step when you go to disassemble this in order to move it in a later date. So for right now, we are going to put them, but if you wanted to leave them out, you could probably get away with that. And with those screws in place, I want to go ahead and cut the 2x4 that's going to span the top. That 2x4 will become fairly critical later on when we go to attach this to the wall to prevent the chair from tipping forward. And it also prevents the plywood from sometime later down the road attempting to cup a little bit and it helps in keeping the back flat. Over here on the right, I've slid the board all the way against the board that's going to fit inside of. And once it was in place, I came up here and I scored a mark with a screw. Obviously a pencil would have been a better choice, but I got up here in a pinch and didn't have one. So a quick test fit showed me that it fits nicely. So I'm going to apply a little bit of glue to the back side, and then I'm going to push this in place. A couple of screws from the back, and then one on each side helps to secure this while the glue sets up. And with that in place, now we're going to add the lower support for the back side to secure the back of the seat. The first part to the structural support for the back side of the seat is a 2x4 that spans the entire length. And that 2x4 is going to go underneath here and connect to these 2x4s and be glued to the underside of this board. And it's pretty easy to measure and get a proper length on that by taking your 2x4, placing it on the side of the 2x4s, score your mark, and when you cut it, it should fit nicely in between the 2x4s up against the back and we can secure it. And a quick test fit shows me that we did pretty good. So now I'll attach this to these 2x4s as well as the seat below with a couple of screws and a little bit of glue. And the screws up here are probably optional. Uh, certainly in this case we're going to be putting some cushions down and so we're not real concerned about having a screw head visible through the front side of the seat. But in your case you might not be doing that so you could get away without putting these screws. But in our case since they're going to be covered we are going to put them. And that is as strong as an ox. And now we're going to add an additional piece of support in the center. This support rail is going to help to hold a dryer that's going to be mounted to the other side of this. And those dryers can actually be fairly heavy, especially when the arm's extended. This does not have to go all the way to the floor. And in fact, it may be a bad idea for it to go all the way to the floor because it may prevent the chair from sitting smoothly and it may create a situation where the chair wants to rock a little bit. So it's pretty easy to just get a rough guess and to come up a little piece to hold it with your finger and to cut where your finger is and that way when I take this board and butt it all the way up against the surface, I know that I'm going to be in no danger of going all the way to the floor. Our chair will sit steady and we'll have something to screw into when it comes time to attach the hair dryer that's going to be mounted to these chairs later on. So I am going to apply a little bit of wood glue to this support, but I'm going to limit that wood glue to contacting the support structure and the back of the chair only. In other words, I don't want the wood glue to come into contact any with the seat structure. That would prevent us from taking the seat from the back if we ever tried to move these chairs somewhere down the road. With a screw in at the top, it's as easy as figuring out my center mark down here. And that's easily done by just checking both sides and making sure the board is the same length on either side. 17 inches, 17 inches. And now I'll use a tape measure to find the center mark. And I'll place a screw directly in the center in a handful of places all the way down the back top of the board. And that takes care of that. And now the last part of the born handy phase of this build is going to be to add our side covers that conceal the 2x4 on the back of the chair. And I've already ripped some plywood down to 3.5 inches and the 2x4, if you remember from an earlier step, is spaced exactly the distance away we need to be to accommodate that plywood. So when the plywood goes on, we should have a flush edge and a square corner. I'll trim those to the length of the miter saw, bring those back, and we're going to screw them on. And the easiest way to measure for these is to cut one end square at the bottom like I've done, put it in place where it's going to go, hold it, and place a mark where it comes into contact with the plywood at the top. And that way you'll never be wrong. I'm going to apply a little bit of glue to this as well, just making sure that I don't accidentally glue the upper portion to the lower portion. 
we're going to set it in place and get a few screws in. And now I'll get to the same thing on the other side, and that's going to complete the rough end for the high back chair. Wrapping up that video wasn't possible on location, so I'm sitting right here in front of the aquarium from the Ultimate 75 gallon aquarium build. And so if you followed along in that series and maybe wanted to see an update of the tank, this is where we are today. And as for those high back chairs, I hope you enjoyed part one. And if you did, you want to be sure and check out part two over on the Hair Diagrams channel. I'll include a link to that video in the description. And of course, if you'd like to see more projects along those lines, I'm always looking for suggestions for my next build. So you can be sure and leave that in the comments section as well. This has been my first YouTube collaboration, so I'd like to give a special thanks to the Hair Diagram for allowing me to collaborate on this build. Her channel is much larger than my own, and so this was a huge help for me. And I hope those chairs go a long way toward helping her achieve her goals in her own business. So with all that being said, be sure and click that like and subscribe button if you've enjoyed this video. And until next time, this is Jason with Born Handy.